Welcome to Christian Adventures with Kevin and Leslie McNulty as they discuss the adventure of an inspired life. Remember this, God wants your Christian life to be an adventure. In today's program, we continue my Healing School series. Yesterday, I began sharing that God is our physician. So I'll do just a quick review because I think that's helpful for us. And we took a look at the scriptures. Exodus 15, 26, where the Lord says, For I am the Lord that healeth thee, I am Jehovah Rapha, and that he named himself Jehovah Rapha. Then we see in Matthew chapter 9 and verse 12, Jesus referring to the fact that those that are sick need a physician. And he went on to say, it's not the healthy who need a doctor, another translation says, but it is the sick who need a doctor. So we talked quite a bit about that. So we talked about the fact that if you were given a prescription by a doctor, what would you do? You don't usually just take it home and throw it in the trash. You take that prescription home, most people will follow it to the nth degree. They'll take it every day, they'll do it, they'll follow the instructions. If it says morning or evening, they do it. Well, how much more so if Jesus is our physician, if God calls himself the healer, how much more so should we be taking the medication that we find in the word of God? For it is the word of God that heals us. Amen? So it's so important for us to understand who our doctor is. I like what I heard one preacher say many years ago. He said... Doctors have facts, but we have truth. And we understand that the truth rises to a higher altitude than simply the facts that the doctors give us. What do the facts? Sometimes the facts that people get scared when the doctors give us the facts. Because, oh, I got a diagnosis and now what am I going to do with it? Well, the reality is the power of the diagnosis is not to determine your future. The power of the diagnosis is to give you an opportunity for a new prognosis through the Word of God because the truth will rise to a higher level than what the factual information that the doctors have or that they have given us. Amen? Amen. So we choose a new prognosis. So we covered that yesterday. The importance of understanding that Jesus is our physician and God calls himself Jehovah Rapha, the healer. We also looked at scripture that helps us understand that, does that mean? God no. dealt with sickness in the Old Testament as well as in the New Testament. So the mere fact that it's called the Old Testament just confirms to us the reality that it was old. But even in the old, or that which was, we see in the scripture a clear indication that it is God's will to heal. We, I didn't read these scriptures yesterday, but I'll review them. Old Testament in Exodus chapter 23, and I have lived by this scripture all over the world. And verse 25, and you shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless your bread and bless your water. And there's been many a time I've needed blessed bread and blessed water in some of these countries. And he says, he will take sickness away from the midst of thee. I love what it says. He will bless your bread and bless your water. I was in an evangelism meeting and Reinhard Bonnke, they called some evangelists together in Orlando at uh, Charisma Magazine down there. And they wanted us to talk about America. This has been a number of years ago. And all the young preachers that were there were real excited to talk about finding a relevant message for the hour. Now, I don't, is anybody, has anyone in here ever heard of Reinhard Bonnke? Many people have. Well, for those of you who may not know who that gentleman is, they say that his ministry is attributed to bringing 65 million souls into the kingdom of God. So whatever our religious background in Christianity, I think we can say, wow. Wow. <laughs> Now he's passed on and gone to heaven. But he was a big German man. He's actually 
bigger than me. <laughs> Big, tall German man. So you could just see him. He was wrestling as all. Well. They were all talking, you know, like, oh, you, he wanted to say something. Finally, he just stood up. And with his big German voice, he said, there is nothing more relevant than bread and water. In other words, the very essence of life that each one of us needs, the gospel Jesus Christ brings to us, the gospel of good news, healing, the scripture says, is the children's bread. The water of the Holy Ghost has been shed abroad and put into our hearts. So you and I, if God said in the old covenant, I will bless your bread and I will bless your water and I will take sickness out of the midst of you, how much more for you and I who are believers today? Can we walk into the fullness and the reality that if Jesus said in the new covenant, and I won't go into that in detail, that healing is the children's bread. Did you hear me? Healing is the children's bread. If you think about the story of healing being the children's bread. It was a woman who was outside of the old covenant. She was begging Jesus. She was troubling him. He was on his way walking with his disciples. As he was walking with his disciples, this Canaanite woman, a woman who was not a part of the Jewish community or the Jewish heritage, and she's troubling after him as he goes down the street, hey, oh Lord, have mercy on me, crying out. And the disciples are like, would you, you know, be quiet, don't bother the master. And when she finally gets to him and she calls out to him, he said, I've come, I've only come for the house of Israel. In other words, he hadn't come for her. Think about it. Yet she said, but Lord, yea, even, because the Canaanites would have been considered dogs, dirt, nothing in the eyes of the Jews. But she said, Lord, even the dogs will eat the crumbs from the master's table. Now think about it. Sometimes we measure the standard of our healing or the standard of our need against what we consider to be difficult. Think about it. You know, oh, well, she's got a runny nose. That's really no, I think I shared the chips, but that's really no big deal. But I just got a diagnosis of cancer. What am I going to, it's the big C word. Well, folks, I got a bigger C for you, and it's called C H. R-I-S-T, Christ. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Just take the big C, Christ, and put, I can see one of those commercials, you know how they drop the word, the letters down, boom, 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 all right, then we're just going to have, boom, 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 C-H-R-I-S-T, boom, and push cancer right out of the way in the name of Jesus. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Or what about the big C on COVID? <laughs> C-H-R-I-S-T cancels there we go, there's cancel culture we're going to cancel <laughs> we're going to cancel COVID with Christ hallelujah <laughs> like that <laughs> so the mere breadcrumbs crumbs now folks I, after we had lunch back here today, after our morning session, I, I saw some cheese and some things laying on the floor, and I thought, well, it'd be nice if we just picked it up, you know, somebody dropped a potato chip, and I thought, well, I'll just, I'll pick it up. So I picked it up a lot, and I took it up to the trash can, but I'll tell you what, I certainly wanted, would not have wanted to eat the cheese or the potato chip that was on the floor. I don't know about you. But the reality is this, that that woman understood Christ, what she'd heard about him, what he had done. Maybe she'd seen it, maybe she'd only heard it, but she understood if it was nothing more than just a crumb that fell off of that master's table, that that crumb had sufficient enough life, energy, power to bring back to life her daughter. Hallelujah! Glory. 
God. So the Old Testament also gives us another picture of sickness and disease, of God's willingness to heal. Psalm 107 and verse 20. It says, He sent His word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Wow. Folks, that's so important. As I'm speaking to you today, just you, you latch on to that word. Those words, you see that force that you feel, it's not something that you're just supposed to go, oh yeah, that beats really good. You know, oh man, I like that. It's not about that. It's the fact that when the power of the word is coming out to you, that it should be met with expectation. And as that word goes forth and it's met with an agreement that says, yes, it says, amen. It says, so be it for me right now. And I'm acting on it. That's where faith, that's where we release the power of God right then. Because you hear the word, because he sent forth his word, and he healed them. So as you're hearing it, you're saying yes and amen, it's mine, I take it, I agree, I act on it. And acting on it may mean that you got to get up, like it might be evident, you got to get up and bounce on your knees a hundred times. Because you're believing, you're in the process of a healing on your knees. You understand? Psalm 103 and verse 3. This scripture says he forgives all of your sins and heals all of your diseases. I'm going to go into this a little bit more today. But we talked about sozo the other day. The reality is that at the cross we had a multifold deliverance. At a minimum a twofold deliverance. In the, from the standpoint of he delivered us from all of our destructions. And he delivered us from eternal damnation. Underneath that word destruction, we could say healing falls, deliverance from fear, deliverance or healing from demons, from any plague, from poverty, whatever, poverty of the soul, poverty of the natural life. At that cross, we have a many-fold deliverance because of what he did for us. And so it's important that we remember this, because otherwise, I would dare ask you a question. On what day did Jesus die for your sins? 2,000 years ago, he died for your sins. <laughs> but I have a question for you. On what day did he die for your sicknesses and diseases? But was it a second time, or a different day, or another point in time? Same day? Same body? Same sacrifice? Same moment in time? 2,000 years ago? If we believe he died for our sins 2,000 years ago, and we can receive that salvation, can we not at the same time? Receive the salvation required from our sicknesses, our diseases, and the other ailments that we have in life. It all took place in one sacrifice. We will continue this broadcast next week. If you've enjoyed today's broadcast, let us know. You can find us on Facebook and Twitter and help us spread the word. This broadcast was brought to you by Christian Adventures International, Kevin and Leslie McNulty, and by the support of listeners in your area. Many of you ask, how can I get involved? Well, we have four easy ways to give. You can call us toll free. You can mail something, snail mail. You can go online. But yet the easiest of all is text giving. Visit our website for more details on how you can get involved today. For more information about our projects, ministry resources, and for more Christian adventures, visit www.mcnultyministries.com. Join us right here next week as we explore more Christian adventures. And remember this, God wants your life to be an adventure. Adventure.